Hey, hey, what's going on, Cloud Scholars? My name is Kieran Tross, and I am your host for today's video. I want to say a special welcome to those if this is your first time watching one of our videos here at Cloud Scholars. In today's video, I'm going to talk about Azure B2B authentication with Access Package Assignments. So you may run into a situation, scholars, if, you know, later on in your career, or you're probably dealing with something right now where you're like, hey, you know, you get a request from finance or some head of a department saying, hey, we've got these contractors or we have these users, uh, marketing users that need to access some of our resources and we need to give them access to those resources. So how do you properly go about giving people access? How do you properly go about giving them access to SharePoint groups, applications that you have internally without causing too much exposure? And that's exactly what we're going to go through here. So what we have here is our tenant, which is Cloud Scholars, and then we have an external user, which right now we have defined as a contractor. So one of the things that we need to do, and I'm going to show you later on in this video, is first thing we're going to do is we're going to create the user within our tenant, which is Cloud Scholars. And then once that user gets created, what we're going to do is we're going to now generate an email to that user and through an invite. And then once the user gets that invite, the contractor gets the invite, this way they need to accept it. That's the first part of it. Now, another thing that we need to make sure is these resources, whether it's a group or it's a Teams application, whatever that resource is, we need to make sure that we're managing it in the right fashion. So as I said to you before, an access package can be an application. It can be a group that you're going to give them access to so that they can gain access to something else. Or it could just be a SharePoint site or Teams that they're going to be able to view um, using those credentials. But the thing about we need to make sure that we're doing is we need to make sure that we're staying in compliance. And we also need to make sure that we're doing something where we're secure in our environment so that this way we have our access being managed the right way. We're able to view who has access, why they have access, doing justifications. And then also another thing that we can do is review process. So we're going to go through all that in the video. So Without further ado, let me stop talking and showing you this deck. Let's jump over to the PowerPoint, to the, uh, excuse me. Let's jump over to the uh, portal. All right, so now that we're in our portal, what we're going to do is we're going to first go to Azure Active Directory. So we're going to come over here to Users. And then what we need to do is click New User, and we need to say, okay, we're going we're gonna to invite our external user. So our external user is Cloud test biz of a test account and I'm just going to go and take that information right here at outlook.com and we're not going to fill out first name last name you can if you're really doing this in the real world environment obviously and I'm just going to type in something here as welcome to cloud scholars you can put whatever message you want in there and we'll leave everything else blank now here you can do your own groups and roles and things of that nature. But we want to do everything through access packages because it's just a way, a more defined way, a template to give somebody. Um, in other scenarios, it may make sense to do certain things here, but for this video, we're going to go this route and we'll, we'll let the access package uh, provide them all the other credentials that they need. So we're going to click on invite. And it says invite and user, invite and user cloud test biz. And then now it's a successfully invited Cloud Test Biz. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump over into that account, sign into it, and show you how the email will look. All right, so here is our email. As you see, it was generated. It says Microsoft Invitations on behalf of the default directory, invites at Microsoft.com. And you'll see here it is. It says Welcome to Cloud Scholars. So the next thing that needs to get done on the uh, business uh, side, the external user side needs to be done is they need to accept the invitation. So once that accept goes through, it's going to just let them know like, hey, uh, the default directory and let them know the default directory says we'll receive your profile data, collect and log your activity, user, use your profile data and activity data. And all you have to do is click accept. All right. So here we have it. So it says myapplications.microsoft.com that you'll get to. Right now, there are no apps to show. So what we're going to do now is I showed you how to do the invite, but I didn't go through doing the access package yet. So that's what we're going to jump back to the portal and go ahead and do the access package. All right, Cloud Scholar, so we are back over here at Identity Governance, and this is where we're going to go ahead and create that access package. 
So one thing I do want to point out is we have our access packages right right now there's none and then we have catalogs. So catalogs are pretty much a defined access package you can say um, for a specific group of people. So we can say we have marketing contractors in general. We're going to go with contractors when we're creating our access package. But before we get to that, we have our connected organizations. Now you can say with your access package, you can say, all right, this access package is defined based on this organization. So you can have an access package for contractors and you can say, okay, only contractors, this access package is applied to contractors coming from at abc.com. So that still doesn't make any sense. I'm going to go in and I'll show you. So the well, first thing I want to do is I want to add a connected organization. So the connected organization that I'm going to add, we're going to say Outlook. And then we're going to say Outlook organization. And you would have a different name for it, but I'm just calling it Outlook because that's exactly what we're going to be using. So this is going to be actually our test biz account. We'll say test biz account. We could call it that. So for the directory, this is what I was referring to, that UPN. So we're going to add the, add the directory here. So what I'm going to say is I'm going to call Outlook.com. And you see right here it says add Microsoft account. So take away Outlook.com, call it at ABC.com or whatever UPN for that business, that external business. You can add it to your directory so that this way now you're saying, okay, this access package is only for people coming from this directory. So now you're keeping a scope with it for your resources and then you're making sure that it's not just for anyone. So we're gonna click on uh, add. So, and I'll click select. And then here we have Microsoft accounts is gonna come up with. And then we're gonna say for sponsors, we can add internal sponsors, we can add external sponsors. We we'll could just say, okay, I'll add an internal sponsor and I'll just look for my name here. Where am I at? And then we'll say Cloud Scholars, Kieran Trust, which is fine. And then we'll click on next. And we don't have any external sponsors. If you want to do that, you can. And we'll click create. All right, so that's good. So we've gotten that knocked out. And then now here you see name, test, biz account, and we have organization and it's connected by my my information. So then we're gonna come back up here to access packages. I'm gonna click new access package and I'm gonna call it the access package I wanna call it. So I'm gonna call this uh, contractors access package. You can choose a different name if you want for our contractors. And then on the catalog, I'm gonna choose the contractors catalog and I'm gonna click next. So what am I going to give this contractor access to? So first I'm going to say, I want you to get into the contractors group and the role I'm going to give you a member. And then I am not going to group again. I'm going to application and I'm going to say, I'm going to give you access to box because that's where the information is located at. And for box, you're going to have a user account. So I'll click next. And then this is where I was referring to, right? So for users, not in your directory, and the way you set up those catalogs, I could have set up a catalog for this way. It's only for users outside of the directory, but I didn't create it that way, which is perfectly fine. So then you also have for specific connected organizations or all configured connected organizations. So if I say specific, this is where I'm fine tuning it. And I'm like, okay, hey, this is the one I just created. And I'm like, okay, so only from this organization is going to have access to these resources. So then I come down here and I'm like approval. So do I require approval? I can say yes, and then I can go through, okay, well, require ju requester justification. I can say how many stages of approval. I can say who the first approval is, the fallback. I have a whole bunch of different options here. But for the sake of this video, I like to keep things simple when I'm teaching. It's just easier to digest. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to say no for this specific scenario, and then enable new request. I'll say yes because we want to make sure that this it can go through. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to go to the requester information. So this is where we could collect information and attributes from the requester. So we can ask them a bunch of different questions. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is first question I'm going to ask is what do you need access for? 
and I'll just do short text is fine. Next question is, is this enough data for you? I'm just throwing out stuff there for you, but I'm also going to change this and say multiple choice. So it's giving me this error. It says answer values are required for multiple choice. So it's saying, hey, you know, we don't know what multiple choice options you're going to you're going to need. So you need to put that information in for us to capture it. So I'm going to keep this simple. I'm just going to say something as simple as yes. And then for language, I'm going to say Spanish. And then localized text. So this is basically saying, okay, we understand what you're having here, but if this is somebody in another region, you could go ahead and you can put in the information for us. And we'll just say C, which is fine. And then over here, I'm going to say no, no. Okay, so now it's stopped. So I'm just going to click on save. And then we have our two questions here. One is multiple choice, one is short text. Next thing we're going to go to is uh, life cycle. So on the life cycle, we can choose how long is this going to last for. So we, what's the expiration time? So is it access package assignments expire on date, number of days, number of hours, or never? So we can say, you know, 200 days if you want to do that. Or we can say on this date, we could do it to, I don't know, February 24th, 2023. Then we can say users can request specific timeline. If you want to allow users to be able to submit a custom start or end date, you can. If you want to be more restrictive, you can say no. Then there's a show advanced expiration settings. So you can say allow users to extend access. Right now it's a no. Uh, you can put yes, but we're just going to leave it the way it is. And then here is a great feature that they have, which is the access review. So for the access review, it's like, okay, when are we starting the access review? So this is January 12th, 2023. And then what frequency are we going to do annually, biannually, quarterly, monthly, and weekly? One thing I will tell you is working in IT, that there are a lot of times you'll set something up and then you just may forget. You're running around, you're doing a bunch of different stuff. The access reviews are their automatic triggers to you, right? So they're like, hey, it's been 30 days. Is this access still needed? It's been 30 days. Is this access still needed? Things happen in business. So there may be times where, you know, you're in the month of March and then you're like, hey, we need this. We're going to be doing business with these guys. Next thing you know, something, some legality, something of that sort happens or some something happens. It doesn't really matter. And then, you know, you're by June, you know, you don't want to give them access anymore. Or perhaps, you know, they're no longer within the system or something like that happens. Then you're like, oh, okay, the access has gone on for the, the next six months and you really should have cut it off from way before. So the access reviews really give you that ability to kind of just keep uh, management and, and the eyes over your organization. So you can change how you want to go through these access reviews. You can say specific reviewers or manager. It's totally up to you, but I'm just going to take it off and say no because I want to keep this video simple. So next we're going to go to rules. We're not going to put anything in here, but rules are basically a, a if something happens, then do this. So it's a conditional statement, basically, of how you want to go through this. And then finally, we're going to go to the next, which is going to be create. So over here is just letting us know exactly what options we chose. And then once we're going to we're done with that, we click on create. And then once that's created for our external users, you have to remember this. You need to give them my access portal link, even if they are on Azure themselves in Office 365. If they're in their domain and they type in myaccess.microsoft.com, what happens is it's going to go to their domain. So they need to be able to say, okay, I need to access stuff at Cloud Scholars. So what they need to do is get this link and then it needs to be sent over to them so that this way they can log in and access the access package. So we've created the access package. The next thing that we need to do is now go back to our test biz account and then see exactly if we're able to see those two, the groups. We're not really going to see a group, to be honest with you, but at least we can see the um, box application and we should be able to also see the questions as well. All right. So Cloud Scholars, I just logged in. And as you can see right now, it says the access package that I have access to. It says contractors access package. Description for our contractors and resources. It says contractors. It says box. And then when I click on request right here, it gives me those questions that we put in there. So it's what do you need access for? 
And then is this info uh, info data for you? I don't even know why I wrote that, but is this enough? No, no, sorry. Is this enough data for you? I'm reading it wrong. And then you have the option of yes and no. So there you have it. So we were able to walk through all the steps. Uh, let's just do a real quick recap of what we covered. So in the beginning, we talked about we're going to have our, our tenant, which is Cloud Scholars. We're going to send an email, which we did, and then that it, contractor needs to accept it. And then once they accept it, then they're able to get those access package based on what that access package has, which ours had the application was a box. And then for the group was uh, our contractors group. Uh, we didn't give them access to any SharePoint. But throughout all of that, we were still able to govern everything and go over the access reviews. We were able to see how long we wanted the duration of that access package. And we were able to really make sure our environment was safe and only those people within that domain, that outlook.com, would be able to get that access package. So I hope this video was beneficial for you. I had a real lot of fun making this video for you. Um, if you haven't done so already, please smash that like and subscribe button. If you have any questions or comments, please submit them. Uh, we're more than happy and we love to hear from you all. Here at Cloud Scholars, my goal is to get you from scholar to consultant and from consultant to expert. Thank you and I'll see you next time.